Now, Nigeria is a country in a very deep hole indeed. An economic crisis, a security calamity, and now an indefinite nationwide strike across the public sector, which began today and which is already causing significant disruption. Millions of people are without power, and the country has been plunged into darkness as the walkout by public sector workers shut down the electricity grid and disrupted economic activity across the country. Domestic flights have been cancelled and schools and hospitals have been shut. The strike organised by Nigeria's biggest trade unions, the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress, was called after negotiations with the government over a national minimum wage broke down. They are demanding a new minimum wage of 494,000 naira, the equivalent of about 343 US dollars. The current national minimum wage is 30,000 naira, or about 21 US dollars. I must appreciate the executive of the, the two unions, the na two, uh, national unions. They have been resilient trying to engage government since last year, trying to let government know that May 31st is the end of the negotiation for the new minimum wage. Of course, all this why they have been meeting, meeting, trying to tell um, Nigerian government the demand of Nigerian workers. Not too much, very little. Please, increase, give us a living wage. The new government came in last year and the first thing they did was to increase the pump price of PMS. Of course, you know the inherent, the inherent uh, uh, variables that will come with the increment of PMS. Price increase in food, virtually everything. Transportation, where I used to come before, I come with 200 naira, I will come with 800 naira. And Labour just said, pay the Nigerian workers 400 and something thousand. And government is coming with 60,000. We are not demanding for too much. The national body of the unions are not demanding for too much. All we ask is for you to pay us a living wage. The workers, we are suffering. Everybody in Nigeria is suffering. And we want it to stop. That is why we are crying that they should please. Even for us to be here under this action, it bleeds our hearts. We are crying inwardly. We are not enjoying it because we believe that a child that is serving the parent should not cry for food because before he or she being served. So well, the striking workers there, well, the strikers divided opinion within Nigeria, with some condemning the action as illegal and others supporting the unions. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the lawyer and senior member of the ruling APC party, Jesutega Onopasa, and by the public policy analyst, Abba Kaka. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for coming thanks, in. Thanks for having us. Sir. Let me start with you, Jesu Tega. It looks like this strike has really bitten into the fabric of this country just on its first day, and it was what the unions warned would happen, didn't they, if negotiations with the government on a new minimum wage failed to reach a conclusion by Sunday night, mm. and it clearly has. Mm. Yes, the, the problem is that the negotiations did not fail. The truth about the matter is that the labor leaders, both of them, the top leaders, uh, Joe Ajairo and uh, uh, First Osusifo, they just lack negotiating skills. That's just the bitter truth. They don't know how to negotiate. They ought to go and brief a lawyer to negotiate on their behalf. Uh, it's not me. They don't have. They can't even afford me. I don't want them to to retain me, to brief me, to to negotiate on their behalf. Well, I don't think they were considering you. Uh, so let's move on. Know, let's move on uh, from there to know, the meat and potatoes of the discussion. They don't know how to <coughs> negotiate. You don't run away from the negotiating table. And their approach to to trade unionism is most appalling. Strike, strike, strike. What have we achieved with strikes? Now, people in this country, Charles, they, the majority of our citizens, they earn their daily bread on the basis of 
daily wages, daily earnings, daily pay. It's what they work in a day that they use to feed their kids, they pay hospital bills, they pay school fees, they send their kids to universities. <coughs> Years later, that kid becomes a governor, a senator, a president. That's how we live. Now, that's how not, uh, that might not be how I live. That is certainly not how Joe Ajayro or Fessor Sosifo lives. We, we meet, meet in places. They are like me. What about the Nigerian worker? When you open an office, let's say a bank, and then people are coming, trooping in, you will look, look, just look carefully. You will see by the side some a woman selling what we call mama put. That's how she takes care of her family. Now you say there is a strike. The people are hungry. That's the truth. I'm not because I'm uh, 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 an APC chief to pretend that that's not uh, the case. <clears throat> we have challenges. Which we are not caused by Bola Tinubu. Not at all. These are piled up challenges. And there is nothing that exercises Bola Tinubu more than trying to break down the cost of living. Okay, well, I think you, you've made some points there. Let me bring you in, uh, Abba Kaka, because uh, here we are in the midst of a significant disruption, but what the unions are calling a legitimate disruption, um, because they are in the midst of galloping inflation. They are in the midst of the removal of, um, of the fuel subsidy, and nothing has actually been done to cushion the effect of that subsidy. And Nigeria is an economic crisis and a security crisis. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, thank you for having me also. Actually, it's a very unfortunate uh, situation we're in right now. It shouldn't have gotten to this point because there's a tripartite uh, negotiating uh, committee saddled with the responsibility of uh, getting to the bottom of this problem. And, uh, you know, at this material time, now that we're here, it's a matter of being diplomatic, being sensible, and being honest. And it's, if I have to be an honest broker between the labor union and the government, I will now say that 30,000 or 35,000 or even the 60,000 offered is not a living wage. A bag of uh, rice is about 85,000 naira. I don't expect somebody with 35,000 to 60,000 per month take home, can't even take him home actually. Uh, you know, therefore, something has to give. The government has tried to come up to 60,000 Naira, which is still inadequate. The reality of Nigeria today, the inflation is, we are talking about 33.8 or 9 percent. That's the official figures. And uh, as he said, you know, there's hunger in the land, no doubt about that. Things are tough. People are going through hell, you know. But we have to be more humane. There's too much corruption in this land. And there's too many leakages that government has to block. If those leakages can be blocked and the corrupt officials are brought to book, how, you know, millions of Naira will be realized, which is where we should be focusing right now. Because that way the Nigerian worker, even if they don't get the 494,000 Naira they are demanding, we meet somewhere in the middle mm. so that, you know, at least being an honest 
broker yes. should do that. Right. Well, let me bring you in, uh, Mr. Onopa, sir, um, because as he was saying, the unions are pushing for a new national minimum wage mm -hmm. of 494,000 naira. Um, that's up from the current minimum of 30, 30 35,000 or about mm. 21 US dollars, mm. basically. They're mm. asking for 343. The unions are arguing that that minimum wage simply isn't reflective of the current economic realities mm. in Nigeria. But I mean, there is an insanely large gap between what the minimum wage is right now and what the unions are, are after, demanding, yes. And that is the problem. You, you just crunch the numbers. What is our revenue? What can the government mobilize to pay workers? I mean, you don't, you don't, this is not unionism anymore. It's pure politics and something bordering on on uh, on on something on, on the borderlines of togri what how, how is just how many workers does government have federal state local government are they supposed to sack 90 percent 80 percent of their workers to be able to pay 10 percent of the workers 400, five, that's approximately 500. Well, the million. argument is that there needs to be a, a, some form of redistribution of wealth. Yes. And but, but as, as Abba Kaka was saying, yes. then you need to plug the corruption loophole. Yes. Abba, you Abba you Abba can't Kaka, have the National Assembly even, even, spending mm, billions mm, of Naira, not only on themselves, yes. but also on things like buying new cars, renovating yeah, their yes, premises, even, uh, taking lavish trips abroad. Beautiful. When you come and then when it comes to paying the, the work, even your you, labor, you start coming up with a story. Your labor leaders, Charles, they drive the same car I drive. I bought my car by any money. I don't know how much is their salary where they work because they are supposed to be workers. Joajaro and uh, what's his name, Fessor Sosifo. What's their salary that they can afford a car like that? Well, I don't know what car they drive. Oh, so, they so drive. That's, a, yeah, that, that's so, a slightly different thing. We're not, no, we're not, no. We're not talking so about. So you are talking about fighting for Nigerian workers. It's just grandstanding. No, no. But what I'm asking you is, can, can you address that point that has been made? Yes. Now there is simply no money, unless you are living in dreamland, to pay four hundred thousand. Unless you are going to destroy the entire civil service. Well, you talked about negotiation. Beautiful. Arguably, that's a negotiation. Yes, and, and, then, and then even me. Yeah. Listen, I'm not. I'm a Tinubu supporter. I'm not a psychopath. Well, that's clear. That sixty thousand is low. Mm. I don't even agree with it. So you think it should be higher? Of that? course, it should be higher. Right. It should be higher. But the question is, how high? That that will now depend on negotiation. Yeah, but that is the meaning of coming back to the negotiating. Table. Yeah, but not not for people, excuse me, Charles, not for people who drive a car that is worth two hundred million naira to be pretending to be fighting for Nigerian workers. And you can you can you can prove that that's the car they're driving of course. and they bought it themselves. It, no, they bought it with the money of Nigerian workers because <laughs> their salary cannot afford it. Okay, let me bring you in, uh, Abba Kaba. I mean, what what are your thoughts on what with the discussion so far? Because this is the fourth strike embarked upon by the union since President Tinubu took office a year ago. Yes, and it's sure. a direct result, according to them, of his reforms, which has fueled a rise in inflation. You talked about that earlier, to a 30-year high and the worst cost of living crisis in decades. He promised relief um, to households and small businesses to cushion the effects well, that hasn't properly materialized. No, it hasn't. Actually, uh, you know, being realistic is that President Tinubu inherited a rot. No doubt about it. Second, he's trying his best. Third, there's no money in the system. But my main concern is when Nigerian Walker sees the lavish lifestyle of our politicians and our public servants mm. 
you know, it doesn't make sense. Doesn't make the vice president, if you remember, uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, uh, warned the Nigerian elites that <laughs> time will come where you cannot drive these jeeps and the SUVs mm -hmm. that they're buying. You know, look at the padding in the Senate. A 200 million naira for one borehole, mm. 180 million naira for one street light. Nonsense. Come on. So corruption is a big problem. Corruption is the problem, you know. But let's be realistic. 1,000 of Tinibus in the villa cannot change the reality on ground because it's monumental. Mm. And the reality, the labor also needs to understand that what they're asking for are 1,547% increase yes, yes. at one go oh, will also trigger in new inflation. No, but they've come down from what they asked for originally. Exactly. Which was 600 and something thousand. They're down to 400, 400 and something. Exactly. The federal government has moved that, forward that, that exactly. a little bit. So, so the point that Jesse Tega is making right. is that it's a process of negotiation. Yes. And so I can understand completely where each side tries to push their own advantage as far as they can go exactly. in order to win greater exactly. Yeah. The point yeah. is that greater, they are greater not exhausted sort of leverage. They are not exhausted the negotiation process. Well, that they, is it. they didn't say they've exhausted. It. Yes, then why they're go simply, on strike? They're it's simply pushing illegal, their advantage. It's an which illegal is perfectly strike. Understandable. It's an illegal strike. You up, you 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 go through all options before strike is the last resort. Yeah, but the, if you were the person who's in charge of negotiations, the attitude that you're clearly putting out now would not make them want to come and negotiate with you, would it? Of course. Why, why, why I mean, would you're, you're, not? You're, you're waving I a would, big hammer over their heads no, when they're not, the ones who have a hammer not, over your not, head. They don't. They don't. They are, they are breaking the law. You will negotiate for workers. You are asking, you ought to have done your maths. Okay, what is the revenue of government? What can government uh, devote, dispense as emoluments and salaries? Yeah, but you have admitted that the government can go higher than where it is now. No, I, 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 have, I have admitted that 60,000 is just too low as a minimum wage. Mm. It's, it's, in fact, I am known, I'm a notorious Telugu supporter. <laughs> I do not agree with 60,000. It's just too low. That is what labor should do. So the How do they get right. a higher minimum wage right. for Nigerian workers? That's a good point. So, so the big question, Abba Kaka, is... It's not to go on strike. ...whether the unions want to fix a minimum wage that is affordable for employ to employers. That is because payable. It's not just the federal government. It's also all the other sort well, of employers in Nigeria because yeah. it's a yeah. national minimum wage. Yeah, exactly. So uh, a minimum wage that is affordable to employers but is reasonable enough to improve the lives of workers. Of workers. Absolutely. That is what labor should be looking for. But, you know, <laughs> labor and Nigerian workers are going through so much problems. Mm. Let's, not ad let's admit the fact that the purchasing power of <clears throat> the Nigerian worker mm is completely out you know so 60,000 or 100,000 is not going anywhere but the reality is we have to you know let's look at the sources of these problems you know prices are jumping for a reason inflation is going out of hand for a reason because we are not producing enough mm. We are not controlling the prices of what we are producing. Even if food that is brought, uh, you know, uh, grown up in Nigeria has no combination or no, no uh, what do you call it, uh, no correlation to the dollar, it's up. So government needs to come in, control the prices. More importantly is the security aspect of it because a lot of Nigerians cannot go and farm. 
So that has affected the level oh, of production. Of course, yeah. because what happens is that, <laughs> you know, there's too much demand. You know how much a bag of uh, tomato is? 140,000 naira. Just last year, it was like 35,000 to 40,000 naira. Yeah. So that is, that is absolutely unsustainable. Unsustainable. For workers. I mean, so completely unsustainable. Labor obviously is going through hell as well. Mm. You know, but the realistic point is that let's be realistic about it. That this is a reality we are all facing. Mm. We have to all help the government to re realize more yes. money. But, but to, I, I can you know. see Jesse Tega, yeah. and I, you're, 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 you can be, you are a reasonable person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can see how, I understand the point that Abba Kaba has made, Kaka has made, which is that this is cumulative yeah. over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. But from the workers' point of view and from the unions, you can see why they are flashing with anger because for so many years they have been banging on about reforms it doesn't matter whether it's tinubu's government or the pdp government or buhari's government no. they've been banging on about reforms the same sort of thing that mr kaka is talking about here plugging corruption loopholes running this country in a way that would be transparent and everybody can see what the money is for Mm. So theirs is cumulative anger. It is not selective anger. It's, no, not, it's, it's not, not focused on Mr. No, no, Tinubu. You are, you are, you are, it's you are, cumulative. No, I, I, I would have to dispute that. Uh, but, but Mr. Tinubu personifies government. Yes. It's but, as simple as that. But was what the agenda that Joe Ajayro and his uh, counterpart in the TEC is, uh, they are, both of them are advancing, it's just political. Their candidate lost election. Bola Tinubu won the election. <laughs> and that's the problem. You're, you're trivializing something that is no, extremely no, important. No, 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 no. That is the truth. That is just the truth. That's why he keeps striking and striking and striking and striking. Go and negotiate. Bola Tinubu is the easiest person to negotiate with in this world. He is a reasonable human being with a good heart. He loves even this idea of increasing minimum wage hours. It is Bola Tinubu's idea. It's not Joajaro's idea. Yeah, but, 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 but if, he, if idea. he's got the kind of good heart that you're talking about, and he's got all the the uh, power of the federal government, yes, and but all, is, all, it, is, all, it, all his, is it? Are we going to bring economists? back? Are we going he, he, to bring he, back uh, uh, Godwin Emefele to start no, no, printing no. money to <laughs> no. pay workers and cause more inflation? The, the, There's just no if, money. If he, if he has all that behind him, then he will know that. What he is offering is not a reason, is not a living way. It's not. It's not. It is a process in, in those of. Circumstances. It is not. It is a process of negotiation. Okay, let me come to you, um, Abba Kaka. Mm. Looking at past strikes, um, and perhaps borrowing a leaf from what Mister or not Massa was saying there, that in the final analysis, a, a lot of very very poor people cannot survive strike action like this. Looking at past strikes, people usually return to work after one or two days. Mm. Does the fact that this strike has led to such widespread disruption on its first day suggest that they are more serious this time around? I mean, we are seeing in some cases 100% compliance. Yes, it's a very serious uh, matter right mm. now because this is like crippling the economy and it has security implications as well but the the most important thing is you know there's a deficit of trust in nigeria in previous uh, previous governments have failed to live up to expectations have failed to honor sign agreements have failed to pay what they said they mm. would pay and you know there's so many runarounds that the labor uh, unions and Nigerian workers have been used to and they got to a point this strike shouldn't have happened as I said earlier but it has happened now that it has happened you know the Nigerian worker you don't want to be in their shoes mm. because it's really a bad moment for the Nigerian worker and that is not a take home 
it's not enough, as he also admitted. I'm sure the president also knows that it's not enough, and I hope that he will, you know, uh, ask his team to call them back to negotiation, which the Minister of Information has actually said they are waiting for them. And not only waiting, but once they come, let's be honest and trustworthy mm. in negotiations. Right, and, and they are, um, Jesse Tega, talking about being out on strike indefinitely. In other words, for as long as it takes. And we're hearing that oil unions are threatening to halt oil production, which could disrupt output severely across Nigeria. Yeah. What is your reaction to the, all of the that? The problem is that these people calling the strikes are people like me. If you strike for one year, I will not be hungry. I will buy fuel. I will have, if you, if you cut electricity to my house for one year, I will still have light 24 hours. They are people like me. They are not the average man. Me and them. Well, I'm happy for you. <laughs> we, me and them, we are less than we are less than one percent of the population. What matters in this country is the pop, the the, the man in the street. So let nobody grandstand. Yeah, but if that is what is important, no, why, no, these why people, have you not put these in people place, are these people what, are hypocrites. You, why have you not put in place your government? The country is experiencing is the exactly worst what, living cost of living ex, crisis in it decades. It was not caused by Bola Tinubu. Everybody knows that. Even you, Charles, know, you know that. Oh, please. It was not caused by Bola Tinubu. We have we have a crisis in this country. We have we have a cost of living. Uh, we have, I first experienced cost of living crisis in 1984 in Buhari's, during Buhari's uh, military government. That's when I first first experienced cost of, of, of living crisis. So let nobody blame. Uh, 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 the Bible says that shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Let nobody blame Bola Tribu for what he did not do. Now we have a, a, a problem of payment of workers. We negotiate a living wage, but it also has to be a payable wage. A payable wage. That's that's it. If it's not, the law says. I thank uh, thank God your your your, your dad Charles was our hero in our profession, a, a legendary jurist. The, the, in, in law, we say lex non cogit ad impossibilia. The law does not compel the impossible. If I can't pay you a particular salary, I can't pay you. Simple. Nevertheless, the government has gone up from what it promised previously. Yes. So that means that it wasn't actually, it was saying at that time that that's what it can afford to pay. That's, that's, it's gone up that's the that. process of negotiation. Right. Okay. Let them go and get, get proper people, both Ajairo and Francisco, with due respect to them. They right. just okay. don't know how um, to. Abba to Kaka, do. we've got a minute and a half left. Okay. Your final thoughts. Uh, my final thought is that, you know, uh, labor leaders and, you know, they are reasonable Nigerians just like us. And uh, this strike affects also the Nigerian worker. It's not good for them. It's not good for us. It's not good for the government. So we are all in it together. So my advice is that since the government is willing and able to sit down and negotiate, as the Minister of Information has actually called, we are appealing to labor to see reason. Because, you. you know, to see reason and come back to the negotiation table that, you know, we hope that things will be different. Mm. We hope that they will meet somewhere in the middle. In the middle. Yes. You know, as long as the strike continues, it's affecting everything. The banks mm. are closed. Airport is closed. The no you know, hospitals, the hospitals are closed, God. and our Nigerian children are going through waek. Mm. For God's sake, my God, you know. And this is a West African examination. Yes, if Nigeria is out, we are out. Across so the, our the children, you know, have studied, and they are the best children in right. West Africa. Well, let me just, as a final yeah. word, just a quick update okay. that they were supposed to be meeting the government today okay. so we'll have to see what comes out of yes it. Okay. but i want to thank both of you very much indeed for a very spirited very illuminating discussion thank you uh, abba kaka is a public policy analyst and of course jesse tega on is a lawyer 
and senior member of the ruling APC party, what we like to call a chieftain of the party. <laughs> Thank you very much. Indeed.